He's been a way maker. He's been a promise keeper. Remember that everything that concerns you concerns God. He's not forgotten about you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So if you got a praise on your lips and a, a glory hallelujah in your heart, you ought to give God some praise because he deserves all of our glory. He deserves all of our praise because it all do. And it's under to his name that we worship and we magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light.
is a way maker. I know it's hot outside, but you have not lost anything during this pandemic. You're not homeless. You got food in your refrigerator. You got clothes on your back. God has still been provided. He still paid the bills, huh? Hallelujah. Your kids are still alive. Your family members are still alive. God is a keeper. He's a healer. He's a provider. Hallelujah. 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 Say it with me. Is there anybody out here on today that really truly loves the Lord? Can you just put your hands together and with somebody just open up their mouth and bless God out here? Hallelujah. There's a song that says, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today mm -hmm. because you cared for me in such a special way. That is why. I lift you up and I magnify your name, your name, your name. That is why my heart is filled with praise. One more time, I love you. Yes, I do. I love you. Oh, oh. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. In such a special way, that is why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name, your name. My heart is filled with 
praise. Hallelujah. I don't know about you on today, but I really, truly love the Lord. Has he been good to anyone out here on today? Can you give him an awesome praise? An awesome praise for an awesome God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that your God is awesome? Hallelujah. Right where you are, can you just uplift your hands and just open up your mouths and begin to bless him out here under this open heaven? Glory to God. To bless him means to speak well of him. And I'm quite sure every one of you that are out here on today has something that you can speak well about, about your God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord our God, we thank you. We are so blessed and privileged, honored to be here on today. We thank you for life, health, strength. We thank you, dear God, for allowing us to have the activities of our limbs and be in our right minds. This is a new day, and we're grateful. For you said with every new morning, there are new mercies. And we thank you for new mercies. Father, I pray for these next 25, 30 minutes that you would give us a visitation, meet us, caress us, minister to us, shape us, purge us, and empower us. Give us the kind of experience with you on today that when we have left this place, we can truly say that we have been in the presence of the Lord. Now, God, I thank you. I bless you. Appreciate you and magnify your name. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. And bless our God. Hallelujah. I want to give honor unto every man of God who's out here on today. Unto every woman of God, God bless you. To the mothers and deacons of our church, we honor you on today and thank God for you. All of you God's children, we honor you on today. All of our guests who are with us, we thank you and appreciate you for coming out and being a part of our worship experience on today. I want to give honor unto my mother who's out here, She's over there in the cut. Amen. I want to also give honor unto my wife. She's sitting right up there. Give her honor on today. We're not going to belabor the time. I'm going to ask you to go with me into 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Very familiar passages of scripture, and it reads like this. It said, it happened after this, that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Jedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Verse number 12 says, O oh, our God, will you not judge them 
for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming up against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite. I guess it got too hot for my Bible app. So, that's why you always have backup. Give the devil no space. Amen. The son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord is with you. Verse number 19 says, Then the Levites of the children of the Korahites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Verse 22 says, now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude. And there were dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil. They found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they had stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. But let's go back to verse number 12. It says, oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. On this afternoon, I want to talk to you. From a very simple subject, God, this one is on you. Would you repeat after me and say, God, this one is on you. I want you all to hear me on today because if you are here today and that's you, I just want to ask you if you would just begin to open up your mouth and praise and bless God. And understand on today that this one is on God. Brothers and sisters, I want you all to understand something on today. That there is a time and a place in life where you will find yourself, if you haven't already, emotionally, mentally, and physically drained from life. It's issues and it's problems and the drama that comes along with life. Where you have given every ounce of your fiber and your faith and still find yourself reeling, bewildered, and frustrated. 
dealing with unruly people and vicious lies and threats, broken promises, struggling with sickness and disease, the death of a loved one, the loss of a job, family strife, financial trouble and turmoil, or just people, people who are trying to destroy your life, attacking your name and trying to bring affliction to your character. Whatever it is, I just stop by just to encourage and to inspire you and to tell you on today, stop banging your head up against the wall. Stop getting frustrated and stop feeling like you can't take no more. And just tell God, because let me tell you something. There is a point in your life where you just have to understand and tell God that this one right here is on you. In other words, I have done all that I can do. I've given all that I have spiritually. I've given all that I have mentally and intellectually. I have given all that I have even emotionally. But God, this one is on you. Now listen and let me say this because if you're being hard pressed, if you're being stressed because of your own doing or your own mischief, I'm here to tell you this ain't for you today. But if you're a person out here today that has found yourself hard pressed and stressed. Your name and your character has come under some form of attack. And you haven't caused it to happen. I'm here to tell you that this word of encouragement is for you. Can I talk to you on today? Because I don't care if you're in the midst of one of the greatest battles of your spiritual life. I don't care if hell may have uh, an all-out attack against your life. I'm here to tell you like the words of David. When David said that when the wicked came up against me to eat up my flesh, he said my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. I want you all to understand something on today because as a believer in God, we are consistently and constantly surrounded by invisible, invisible enemies whose assignment is to frustrate and plot, scheme and manipulate our demise and our downfall and to bring about any type of measure of destruction that the enemy can by any means necessary. I want you all to know that we are in what I call a spiritual struggle. We are in a spiritual fight. We are literally fighting for our spiritual, emotional, and physical existence in this earth. And the enemy, the devil himself, has given his demons an assignment. And their assignment is to destroy the righteous. One thing that the enemy has the upper hand on is, is that he knows how to manipulate our flesh. Another thing about the enemy is this, is that he will never try to fight you in the spirit. But the enemy, if he can, he will do his best to try to attract you to come out so that he can cause you to enter in to your flesh. In other words, the enemy wants you to fight him face to face. But as a believer in God, you have to understand something on today. That the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Meaning that the weapons that God has given you are not worldly. They're not man-made. But they are spiritual weapons that God has empowered the believer with. 
that the pop that the it that the that the believer has the ability to destroy the powers of darkness. The word of God said, casting down imaginations, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, to take into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You have to learn how to use your spiritual, your spiritual, your spiritual authority. Can you just repeat after me and say, use your spiritual authority. But I'm here to tell you there comes a time in your life when you have done all that you know is right. And you have gone as far as you can go. This is when God will let you know that I'm going to take over and I'm going to take it from here. And all you need to do is just like Moses told the children of Israel. Moses told them, he said, I want you to get still and just see the salvation of the Lord. There's a reason why God wants you to get still. Because see, sometimes we can be a little bit antsy. We can become a little bit itchy. And then we can find ourselves moving ahead of God. But what God wants us to do in being still is finding that resting place. That resting place in him. Here in our text, we have Jehoshaphat whose back is against the wall. And it has happened simply all because what he had previously done when you read in the 19th chapter of the book of 2 Chronicles. Jehoshaphat, when you read in the 19th chapter, and you begin reading, you will learn and you will find out that Jehoshaphat had made major changes and he had made major reforms in Judah. In other words, he had brought the people back to God. He had set up judges throughout all the cities of Judah. And he had given them instructions and in how to judge the people and to judge them righteously. He had appointed some of the Levites and he had appointed even some of the priests to carry out the spiritual matters that in order for them in serving and how that they would serve, that they would serve in fear of God. Just not any kind of way, but they would serve in fear of God, being faithful to their charge. And having, the Bible says, a loyal heart. He had removed the wooden images from the land, meaning that he had removed false worship from Judah. And had even prepared even his heart to seek God. In other words, what Jehoshaphat was doing, he was trying to bring the nation back to God. Can I tell you all something on this afternoon? The enemy gets upset when you set things right and in order with God. Because see, when you get order in your life, you gain influence, you gain favor. You gain anointing and power with God, which means that you have spiritual aptitude and ability to unravel the schemes and the plots and the trickery of the enemy. And just like with Jehoshaphat, the enemy has it up in his mind. That he's going to up his game even when it comes to you. In order to try his best to intimidate you by overwhelming you with a multitude of issues. And all at once out attack against your life. 
The enemy will do all that he can within his power and his ability to try to get you to lose your focus and your drive and your strength in God. But now when you look at Jehoshaphat, even though he gets bad news and his first response is to become fearful, yet when you look at him, he never loses focus on where his help lies. So he looks and he seeks God through fasting and prayer. I remember a long time ago, they would say, yes, uh, if you fast, you will last. If you pray, you will stay. I'm here to tell somebody out here on today, there is a point in your life where shouting and dancing and rolling in the floor and running around the church just don't cut it. Now, don't get me wrong, I like shouting, I like dancing, I, I like praising. But there is a point spiritually, as a man and a woman of God, where your shouting and your dancing and your praise won't get you where fasting and prayer will take you. Sometimes you got to go a little bit deeper. Because, see, there are certain problems. There were certain issues, there are certain spirits, there are certain devils that just shouting and dancing and praising God just won't get the job done. But there comes a point as a believer when you got to literally go there in God, where you got to get down to business with God. You've got to push away from the table. You've got to turn your plate over and get down to business with God. Would you help me and just shout out, get down to business with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got to learn how to get down to business with God. I don't hear nobody out here on today. Glory be to God. But Jesus himself said that these kind only come out by fasting and prayer. See, here's the thing about fasting. Fasting looses the bonds of wickedness. It will undo the heavy burden. It will let the oppressed go free. And fasting can break, not just destroy, but fasting can break every yoke. But after, when you look at Jehoshaphat, and only after he had fasted and he had prayed, he finally got a word from the Lord. And that's what many of us need today we need a word from the lord can i tell you something about a word from the lord one word can change your life one word from the lord can change your situation one word from the lord can change your outcome from defeat to victory one word from the Lord can change your atmosphere. One word from the Lord can change from not enough to more than enough. The word, the word, the word that you all have to understand that God spoke unto Jehoshaphat was don't be afraid or dismayed of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but the battle is God's. Will somebody shout back at me and say, the fight is not mine, but the fight is God's. In other words, God, this one is on you. 
Oh my God. Because see brothers and sisters, there are some fights that God will let you fight. But then there are some fights that God says, let me have this one. As a matter of fact, Moses told the people of Israel when their backs were up against the wall. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see again forever. See, I'm here to tell you, and I'm about to wrap this thing up. When you fight your enemies, oh my God, when you take on your enemies, when you begin to fight your enemies, sometimes you can win the fight, but your enemies show right back up. But when God says, let me do the fighting on this one, when God fights your enemies, you will never have to ever worry about seeing that same enemy over again. Because when it comes to God, he will destroy your enemies forever. And in my closing, Y'all with me? Yeah. And in, boy, it's hot out here. Yes, sir. That hot, that hat made me hotter. Yes, sir. Sister Mary. But in my closing, when you look at what the children of Israel did, after God defeated their enemies. When you read the story, the Bible says how God set an ambushment. The same enemies that got together, who conspired to come up against Judah, God got in their mind. And they turned on each other. I'm here to tell you, ain't it something funny how your enemies will all come together for your defeat. But God. Oh, I don't hear nobody out here. But God. Because when God gets in the action, Everything changes where it looks like everything is against you. Oh, I heard it. I hear it right now. If God be for me, he is more than the world against me. In other words, those enemies turned on each other. And before it was all over, all their enemies we're dead. God flipped the script. And I'm here to tell you on today that he wants to flip the script for you. Oh, I don't hear nobody. But there's something that you have to do. Something soft. There is something you have to do. Number one, acknowledge God. I, I don't care what's happening, what's going on, what you're being confronted with. Whatever temporary disturbances that are going on at the present time, acknowledge God. By you acknowledging God, that's you keeping your focus on the source of your strength. Number one, acknowledge God. Then there comes a point in a time that you have to really learn how to seek 
the face of God. I've learned that when I am overly frustrated, I have gone as far as I can go. And it's at that point that I realize it's time for me to take a step back and allow God to take a step forward. Jehoshaphat realized that. He didn't try to do it himself. And that's something sometimes that we as humans will try to do. We'll try to fix it ourselves. We'll try to do it ourselves. Instead of allowing God to get in the mix, Jehoshaphat allowed God to get in the mix. And after he fasted, after he prayed, only then did God move. Can I say something? Fasting is not a popular thing. I had somebody ask me, they, they said, if I don't fast, does that mean I'm going to go to hell. I told them, no, you won't go to hell for not fasting. But by you not fasting, you are cheating yourself out spiritually on the empowerment of God. And I begin to just share with them, your fasting decreases your natural self and causes your spiritual self to increase to where you become more sensitive to the voice and the leading of God. Is there anybody out here today that needs a word from the Lord? You need him to speak into your situation right now. I want you to lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for your servants who are here on today, my sisters and brothers. Father, you know where each one individually stands, what they are dealing with, what they are being confronted with, and you know the depthness of the situation. Father, I'm asking that you would minister to them in it right now. Let them know going forward from today, just like you told your host of fat, you have no need to fight in this battle. This is not your fight. God, this one is on you. Help us to realize that this one is on you, God. You take control. You have your way. You do it the way that you want to do it. Because whenever you do it, it's over with and it's done forever. And we praise your name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There may be someone out here today who is not saved. 
you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're here, just lift your hand. It only takes a moment to receive salvation. That's all it takes is a moment. And we don't want to overlook anyone. So if you're here, just say, Mr. Preacher, that's me. There is not one. Come on, let's praise God. It's seed planting time. It is seed planting time. And we want to receive our tithe and offerings on today. I want to challenge every one of you if you have not already given. If you would share a gift of love on today. Hallelujah. If you want to give electronically, you can give through the Cash App. Cash App money sign HTC2140. Money sign HTC2140. Hallelujah. 